All right, this podcast is going to go over how to configure a Linux server as a DHCP server. Uh, I have already got my Linux con Linux machine configured uh, with the IP address it's supposed to have 10.1.1.130. Uh, hopefully you've already got your stuff up uh, at this point. And once you do, then it's time to make it a DHCP server. Uh, one thing I want to make sure is the DHCP server software is installed. We can use yum to check that. I did yum list DHCP as root, and it told me that DHCP is installed. So another thing you want to note, I am currently operating as root. If you're not operating as root, then you're going to need to use sudo to uh, do some of the stuff we're doing. But uh, I'm just going to do it as root. sudo-s will get your root shell if you are uh, not currently root. So the first thing we want to do is we need a we need to, to find the uh, DHCP config files. And there in this uh, directory, there's a dhcpd.comp. So we'll look at that. Let's look at that with cat. dhcpd.comp. And it basically says, oh, hey, uh, there's a sample file you can get from that place. So we're going we're gonna to copy the sample file over to the current location. So we're going to copy the sample file and we're going to call it dhcpd.conf. Make sure you put the D when you copy it. If you just have dhcp.conf then it's not going to work right. So we'll copy that. We'll overwrite yes because all it has is the empty file and now we will edit that file to configure our dhcp server. So if we look at this file there's a lot of stuff in here. But basically, we need to uh, find a configuration that's similar to what we want to do and modify that uh, to meet our purposes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go delete some of the stuff that I don't want. So this is a very empty subnet declaration, so I don't want that one, so I'll get rid of that one. Uh, this one doesn't have very much stuff in it either. This one doesn't have what I want. And then we get down here and this says a slightly different configuration for an internal subnet. So this one looks very close to what I want to have. If you look at the lab sheet, most of the stuff I said we needed to have in here uh, is in here. So now we just need to modify this to match with our subnet. So we are first going to be setting up DHCP for VLAN 3. And that is the 128 network, 10.1.128, with a... 128, uh, 255.255.255.128 subnet. The range is where we specify what range of addresses we want to use. And th this might surprise you, but this range needs to be within uh, the subnet y you're trying to make. So if I just changed it like this, 10.1.1.26 to 10.1.1.30, those uh, addresses are not in my 10.1.1.128 subnet. So I need to make sure this is high enough that it's in my subnet. I didn't want 220, I wanted 200. I'm gonna set 200 to 230. So basically, I've configured my DHCP server to give out 30 addresses in this case. You're gonna want to uh, make it give out more than that if you're doing this in the real world, but for the lab environment, this is fine. Uh, we're gonna change the DNS servers to An IP address, 100.100.102 is my server. Domain name, you can put whatever your domain name is going to be. I don't think it really matters. Mine is going to be rlwell.lab. Routers, this needs to be the router interface on this subnet, right? So that's going to be 129. Broadcast address, we'll get rid of that. Default lease time, that's fine, and that's fine. So this is a config that I think is going to work. So I'm going to uh, open a new terminal, and I'm going to look at the log file. This will show me the log file, and it will show me as stuff uh, shows up. So if you look, my log is already showing that it's receiving packets. I wonder if DHCP is already running. It's receiving packets uh, for DHCP, but it's not doing anything with them because it's not a DHCP server or it's not configured for DHCP on the, the subnet, probably because it's not a DHCP server. So, 
let's uh let's go ahead and try to start this service and hope for the best so to start the service service dhcpd start and it started if you look at the log file it uh, tells me that it started basically and in a second we might see uh, some traffic or I have my handy windows machine here I'll go try to get her address and hopefully it will work oh you see that if you're looking at the log it says hey I got a, a, a discover I got a I made an offer I sent back a request and everything uh, worked uh, great so let's see if I got an IP on my Windows machine yeah, so if you look, I got an IP address configured 10.1.1.200. So that was exactly what was supposed to happen. So that, that was great. A couple of things that might be helpful to you. So what happens if you try to start your service and it doesn't work? It probably means you screwed up your config file. So I'll go back in and screw up my config file in some of the interesting ways you guys screw up your config files. I'll change this to a different subnet. Now if I try to restart my service, it should probably fail. See that failed? And if you look at the words, it kind of tells you why it failed. It said bad range, address 10.1.1.200, not in subnet 10.1.1.0. So it didn't like that. So uh, we need to, to fix, fix our file if it's broken. You know, other things you might do. If you do have this part right, you might have syntax errors somewhere else. You know, say maybe you messed that command up. That's probably going to break things when you try to restart it. Failed. So, oh, hey, line 31 has an error. So even it's, nice, it's even nice enough to tell you what line it's at. So if you get in back in there, if you hit... 31 shift G if you're using the VI editor, it'll take you to line 31 and you can fix that So the first step when your uh, DHCP server fails to start is to look in the log and see um, Why it says uh, It failed to start so that's the first part of configuring DHCP the second part is we want to set a static address on our Windows host uh, using DHCP, sorry, we want to get the same address every time. That's called a DHCP reservation. So we're going to set it up so that our Linux server always gives the same IP address to our Windows machine. So here we have, I need to get the MAC address of the Windows machine. So there's the MAC address. I'm going to put it where I can see it once I got my Windows machine up. You can't see it, but I can. My Linux machine up. So I'm going to edit the config file. And there's a section down here called... Passacalia. This section is a part where you can give out, wait, that's not it. That's a special configuration option. We're going to skip that. Fantasia. This is where you can give out a specific IP address to a specific host. So we're going to change this entry. I'm going to call it rich. I'm going to put the MAC address of my Windows machine. That was colon delimited, right? Yeah, it's colon delimited. So when you change it, make sure you want to change it to be colon delimited still. So I have zero 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 colon zero C colon two nine colon one A colon D E colon D nine. I'm sure somebody's thinking, do you need uh, capital letters? And the answer to that is, I don't really know. If I look farther up up the file I see that it has lowercase letters so uh, I don't know we'll find out I'll try to restart the service oh wait I need to give it the address I'm gonna change this fixed address to an IP address I wanted to have so that's gonna be I'm gonna give it 10.1.1.135 so if this works as expected once I start my restart my service I started it it didn't complain so I guess uh, I guess those capital letters were okay, but we'll find out. So if I do a release, if I release that guy, it shows up in my log that I released the uh, server, the IP. If I release that guy, and then if I do renew, hopefully it's going to get the IP address I told it I wanted to have. Yeah, 
it hasn't gotten it yet, but you see it says offer 10.1.1.135. So once this finishes, it will come up with my static address. So there you go, 10.1.1.135. So you might be thinking, why would you ever want to do a static address through DACP? Well, once you hard code in the IP address into the machine, then you have to go actually touch that machine to change the IP address. If you were doing it with reservations, you could go to the DHCP server uh, to change the IP, and then the next time it renews, it would get rid of the old one and get the new one, or you know, if you like do a, a reboot, remotely it could reboot and come back up and you get the new machine when it, the, the new IP when it came back up so it's it's something that that, that is a little common it happens I, I, don't, I don't know what percentage of the time it happens but I, I have uh, reserved IPs quite a quite a bit in different scenarios so it, it is something that, that that happens so that's the first two parts of the the ACP lab so the next part is we want to create a the ACP scope for VLAN 2 this right now, this is for VLAN 3. We want to leave the VLAN 3 information intact and then create one for VLAN 2. So if you're using the VI editor, you can count the number of lines you need. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So you can do 8 and then hit YY and then go down to where you want to put the file, put the, put the lines, and you hit P and that pastes them. If you're using some lame uh, text editor, then you can just use that lame text editor. And now we want to go change this all to be for VLAN 2. So in this case, I set it for 10, 10 to 20, right? DNS server can stay the same, domain can stay the same. My router is going to change. And now I have a uh, subnet declaration for my VLAN 2. So now if I restart my service, restart my service, it went down, came back up, and didn't really say in the logs, but now it, it's it's ready to provide DHCP services for VLAN one, sorry, VLAN two and VLAN three. So now I'm not in the lab, so I can actually do this. But now what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to do two things. One, you're gonna want to move your Windows PC back into the um, VLAN two port, and then you're gonna want to go to your router config, and you're gonna need to enter the IP. Uh, helper address on the uh, VLAN 2 sub interface and that basically tells the router hey if you hear any DHCP request send them to this server and you're going to put the IP address of the Linux server and you may or may not need to disable the router uh, DHCP config I'm not sure if the router DHCP config will take precedence over the IP helper or the IP helper takes precedence over the router DHCP config but if you try to get an address and it gets an address from the router instead of the Linux box, then you're going to want to get rid of the router config. And that is pretty much what we're doing with the ACP on the Linux server this week.